Guatemala is a bucket list fishing trip for any fisherman. It's one of the reasons why it's my fourth trip. We've got the beautiful topography, calm seas, friendly people. You've got it all. The crews are really into conservation, making this one of the top destinations in the world for any fisherman. Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. My adventure begins in Guatemala City, where the driver is taking me to Pacific Fins, located in Estapa on the Pacific Coast. Amongst all the traffic, you'll find speeding mopeds and motorcycles, and some of the coolest looking buses you've ever seen. They seem like super fancy. They seem like hot rod, like very, very special buses. Like I've never seen anything like that before. A lot of American people like the buses for the painting. And the rims and the big tires and the, the aluminum on the side, it looks cool. Every buses come from the United States. Oh, okay. In the United States, they are uh, school buses but here in Guatemala, change for the different colors. I'm gonna have to try one of those out, get my chicharrones and get on the back of the bus. See. Sí. After our 70 mile drive from Guatemala City to the small town of Estapa, I realized quickly that the people here have very strong ties to the water. The canals, rivers, and ocean create the flow and lifeblood of this community, as it's all based around this bountiful fishery. When fishing out of Pacific Fins, it's common to raise between 30 to 50 sailfish in a single day. Yeah, we're here. Okay, guys, welcome to Pacific Fins. I hope you're enjoying your fishing. Thank you. Hey guys, how's it going? Pacific Fins is all about comfort, beauty, and the best personal service that anyone could ask for. With private villas and suites, a la carte dining, open bar, and a perfectly themed swimming pool, I just know that this week is going to be special. Oh, I'm back, back home. <laughs> uh, excellent to have it with us again. I see these people across the way and I saw them eating ceviche over there. What, what, what's going on? Tell me about yeah, that. We prepared the ceviche combination, a uh, mahi and shrimp. That people have been bringing in big mahi? Well, 30, like... 30, 40 pounds. For sure that you are a good fisherman yeah. and you're gonna catch many I'm fish. all right, I'm all yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> this place really relaxes you. And since we're not going out fishing today, I might as well enjoy the resort. Mm. Oh, that's good. You got all this fresh fish and shrimp and this avocado, but I love these crackers. I don't know what it is about these crackers, but I love <laughs> these crackers. Mm. Wow. Yeah, every time I've been here, the food's been so good. Spoiled. Enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Pacific Fins gets fresh fish daily, and I just happened to look over and see one of the boats unloading a big yellowfin tuna. How far out did you go? 50. 50. Oh, man. I followed the crew to the fillet table to see how much this fish weighed. Man, that is nice. That is nice. Oh, we get to weigh it now. With the tuna flopping over the rusty scale, we couldn't get an accurate weight. The scale is like breaking, right? but the wager started pouring in to see who could guess the weight. What do you think, uh, how many pounds has the tuna? Uh, let's see, I think, uh, 50, maybe 50. 50. 45, 50? No, say one, just one. 50, uh, oh, oh wait, 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 if it's only one, let me, let me get it <laughs> One, <laughs> I think, uh, 
50. I say 60. You say 60? 60. Okay. The guys asked if I wanted a fillet, so I excitedly jumped in and went to town on this bad boy. Let's see if we can get in there. I feel like a sushi chef. Now it was time to see who guessed the right weight by weighing one fillet at a time. The first fillet came in at 10 pounds. There were a lot of eyes on my cutting skills. I have to admit, I was sweating it a little bit. It'll be probably 12. <laughs> Whoa, that's a lot of fish. After counting all the fillets, the head, and the carcass, we finally got the weight. Yeah, 65. 65, 65 pounds. <laughs> Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Fishing chaos. Fish smarter, not harder. Low T Center. Reinventing men's health care. Salt Life sunglasses. See clearly. We wake up bright and early on our first day of fishing off the Pacific coast of Guatemala. there's something going on at every single corner. And as we're going by, like a minute away from the resort, they're making tortillas. In our culture, yeah. we eat tortillas for breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner, like you do with bread. Made from corn flour and cooked over a wood-burning stove, these women make fresh tortillas daily. That's nice. They look good. I like the way they puff up. These guys are cranking them out all day long, every day, and they're delicious. Immediately, I felt the warmth from the cooks, and especially from the bag of tortillas. Muchas gracias. Whoa, calor. That's a hot tamale. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank you very much. That's great, man. Those things were hot. I mean, like fire. Jimmy, what's up, man? How you doing? Where's the crew? Is nobody here today? It's just me and you? What's up, man? I've had the privilege and honor to have fished with Captain Jimmy and his crew here in Guatemala numerous times. We've caught and released hundreds of sailfish together and took first place in the Guatemala Billfish Invitational out of Pacific Fins. I always do a once-over on the leaders, the reels, crimps, drags, and overall situation on the way out. It's in my DNA, always checking and rechecking. The bait of choice here is a chin-weighted swimming ballyhoo. The bite's so good out of Pacific fins that the crew has to bring hundreds of ballyhoo out each day. How far are we gonna run today? Uh, we start to fish like a 15 miles. I want to try a little more salt. Well, this time, selfish come there. So hopefully we'll get some bites today. Good luck, man. Let's do this. Woo. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what's going to happen here is we got these teasers out, these squid chains, and the fish come up and they try to eat these squid chains. So as soon as they come up to eat that, we try to switch out with a bait. So he'll, he'll yell right short teaser, left short teaser, because we got two on the right, two on the left. So if we get one that pops up on a short, he'll say right short teaser. So what you do is you snap this out, take the rod, bring it down to the side, and try to get the fish to bite your... Left long, left long. Left long. There he comes right here, look, he's ready to spread. Right on the teaser. Got him on. Coming up, jumping. Well, that was quick, guys. So that's how they do it in Guatemala, huh? Very fast. Woo, woo. 
Not bad, right? We got a bleeder. All right, now we pin them in the corner. How fast can we get them? This is when we have fun, right? We got our first mahi mahi. This one's gonna be ceviche. It's gonna be on the grill. And that's how you're doing in Guatemala. I've been fishing uh, three minutes. That was quick. I got my white shirt dirty. I guess that's how it's gonna start. That's how it's gonna begin. Man, this guy's just steaming. Hungry little bugger. Look at him. Dorsal fin up, tail out of the water. It's not that big. It's big enough though. 15, 20 pounder. Mahis grow very quickly and have a limited list of predators, allowing them to get very big very quickly. They can gain four to five pounds per month. So in one year, they can go from five pounds to 50 pounds. All right, you want to gaff them? That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a winner. They grow them big here in Guatemala. Look at that. Perfect fit. Mercury, go boldly. Yeti, built for the wild. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Bubba Blade, the ultimate sportsman's knife. With a few mahi in the box, we decided to head further out to look for sailfish in an area where Captain Jimmy expects them to be. Sail fishing is my specialty. I've caught and released over 3,000 in the past 30 years, and it never gets old. Every single one is different and exciting to me, even after having caught my first one over 40 years ago. Sailfish are the fastest fish in the ocean, being clocked at 72 miles per hour. Changing directions instantly and tail walking, ripping up the water, they spent half the fight in the air. How could you not love that? We're catching fish in Guatemala, guys. Coming up jumping. Still jumping, still jumping. Okay, now I got a belly of line I gotta take up. All right. Came up on the left short teaser and just kinda, you know, put the ballyhoo right there. Came up and ate it perfectly, went away perfectly. There's nothing cooler than a sailfish coming up trying to get that teaser, trying to get that bait, and they're wiggling, their bills are going, they're swimming, they're paddling with their tails, their dorsal's flopping. They come up and eat that bait, man, it's spectacular. And every now and then, a squirrel gets a nut. And that's what happened with me just now. So right now, we're backing up. The key is to keep pressure on it. Jimmy, this fish is giving me a little bit of a hard time. Now he's coming up. Here he comes, here it comes. That's a nice sized fish, huh? Yeah! And now you take that line up fast, the captain closes the gap. Jimmy does this all day, every day. And there it is. We've got a Guatemala sailfish. Big fish. Even after getting the leader in the tip of the rod, making it a legal catch, this sail still had some energy left in the tank and wanted to show it off. So basically, when you come down to Guatemala, you can expect this. You got a professional crew, you got sailfish biting all day. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Good job, Jimmy. Good job. Look at the size of that thing. All right, you want to come get this leader? Come on in. Nice fish. Look at that size of that fish. All right. Going away. There it is. Good job, man. Good job. Where are you, Jimmy? There you are, look at my camera. <laughs> Man, we're just getting started now. We got one. Everything prior to this moment was the calm before the storm. He's gonna come up jumping up the middle. Double up, Cap. Hooked up. 
Double header. That's how you do it. Here's my sailfish right here. It's close. Oh, that's yours there, huh? Come on, baby. Should come up off this corner by the ship. We got a wagger, folks. Nice job, nice job, nice job. Woo. Give me some skin, bro. Woo. <laughs> as much as we enjoy the fight, we try to release them as quickly as possible and get the next spread of baits out as fast as we can, and we're back in the action. There he is. Going wild. Once you get in them, man, you can count on catching them all day long. We went there. Hey, good job today, guys. That was a good day, man. Thank you. And this guy here, El Capitan. Me too. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? After a banner day of fishing, as you're cruising back to port, it's just such a rewarding feeling, especially knowing that you and your crew will have fresh fish for dinner. That's what it's all about. I can't believe how early we're back. I thought we were like 50 miles away. We caught a couple. Thank you, Jimmy. Good job today. See you tomorrow. NTB, Tire Kingdom, and Merchants. That's all you need. Pacific Fins, Guatemala, Resort and Marina. Padre Azul, Super Premium Tequila. Life can be fantastic. Yellowfin, your legacy. Wanting to understand more about the deep connection between the people of Estapa and fishing, I visited the local church. At first glance, you can see the influence of fishing in their religious symbols. I had the great honor of sitting and chatting with Father Buenetaya to learn about the religious history of Estapa. Hace como 500 años, el primer lugar donde vinieron los, los españoles y trajeron la parte religiosa a Guatemala, entró por esta parte del Océano Pacífico. Una realidad costera en donde la gente vivía de la pesca y pues quisieron buscar una manera en donde la, las personas se sientan como identificadas con su cultura y con su religión. Es por ello que colocan de patrono de este lugar a un arcángel llamado San Rafael, que es patrono actualmente de los pescadores. What I'm understanding is that the fishing in Estapa and Guatemala is part of the culture. Pues esta región es 100% pescadora. ¿verdad? Las personas día a día salen a pescar en los diferentes ríos que hay en Estapa. The, the, the building is uh, in the shape of a ship. A un padre llamado Padre Roberto le surge la idea de construir una iglesia que tenga estilo de barco. También teniendo muy en cuenta la lectura bíblica en donde Jesús sale en una barca a pescar. Entonces esta iglesia es como esa barca de Dios que quiere pescar a las personas, a los hombres, para que conozcan la fe y amen a Dios. I was then greeted by smiling children. Mucho gusto. Hola. Who were part of the church's many community programs. All these smiles remind me of when I was their age. This is me, 10 años. And how I fell in love with fishing. With the help of my partner Salt Life, we wanted to leave the children with fun and colorful fishing gear. Nombre es? Okay, that's cool. KS. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, even shorts. More shorts. I'm learning Spanish now. Thank you. Protección con el sol from the sun, right? You put it over your head. You want to try? 
There you go, all the way, keep going. Keep going, Con continue, continue. A Phantasma. Pass them down to everybody. Everybody gets one. It's very, very amazing work that you're doing here. This one's gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, a, a fishing captain, maybe, you know, who knows, they could do anything. Anything is possible in Toro El Mundo, you know, with you helping everybody. So thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias también a ustedes por, por venir aquí a nuestra parroquia. So far, Guatemala has been amazing. And with my son Niles joining me for the next part of this journey, I can only expect this to get even better. The ocean is always calling me, and I have to make the most of this opportunity life has given me. Sharing this with my son will be a priceless memory. For additional content and social media, please visit us at unchartedwaterstv.com.